Satan is allowed to sift you so that what is valuable in you will be revealed. Sifting creates what we call the crucible effect. A crucible is a metal or ceramic container in which metal or other substances may be melted and subjugated to very high, high temperatures of heat, which causes them to separate. Sometimes we get in, the Lord allows us to be in situations where we feel separated. You feel isolated and alone. But it is in those alone moments that you really get a good view of who you are and get a good view of who you think everybody in your life really is. See, some people you thought were friends, you didn't realize they weren't your friends till you got in a crisis. People you thought were family, you didn't find out they weren't family until you got in a crisis. Oh, come on. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Let's look at verse 32. Amen. I'm working with this. Now, in verse 32, he says, now, but I have prayed for you. I could stop right there, but I'm going to read the whole verse and then work with this thing. He says, but I've prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Listen, the beauty of this is, see the first part, but I have prayed for you. He said, now Satan has asked for you and, and he's going to sift you like wheat, but I've prayed for you. Listen to this. Before sifting started, heavenly statements of victory were already pronounced over you. Before it even got started. Now, the most important piece you got to grab out of this is that Jesus didn't stop it. See, because Jesus understands there's value in the process. Because you want to learn obedience through that which you. Okay, all right, all right. For those in the back, you're going to learn. You, you look, you didn't learn not to touch something hot till you touched it and you got burned. So you, you found out obedience through what you suffered. When your parents said, don't do it, and you did it, and they lit your behind up. With that belt, you learned the value of obedience because you didn't want to suffer. And when you thought about doing something and you didn't do it because you thought about what you were going to go through, if you did it, you have learned obedience by which you suffer. Now, okay, now, all right, all right, all right. so now, now Jesus, now he prayed in the past tense. And Jesus has already interceded for the event. In other words, Jesus knows it's coming. He's already, he's in front of it. See, that, that, that's wisdom there. When a crisis shows up, get in front of it. Don't act like a deer in the headlights. You ever seen a deer when your car runs up? I hit a deer one time. And as soon as the lights hit him, he didn't move. Now, Bambi, you ever see deers? Like you come up the hill and they see you, they go running, right? Go jumping. And they look so pretty as they run. But the minute your car is going to hit a deer, the deer gets in the headlight and he does this. He don't move. He don't jump. So when you hear the statement deer in the headlights, that's what happens. When crisis shows up, sometimes we get act like a deer in the headlights. We get paralyzed and immobilized. All right, all right. Now. But Jesus sees the crisis and he gets on the front side of it by praying. And see, on May 31st, we're going to be able to get on the front side of some things. Oh, come on now. All right, all right, all right. Now, Jesus didn't stop it because it needed to happen that the true value in Peter's life would be revealed. True value is revealed in a crisis. Number three, Jesus prayed that his faith would not fail him. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing, right? And hearing by the word of God. Not hearing, but that word hearing there means obey. So Jesus is praying that his faith doesn't fail him. But really what he's saying is, I'm praying that you continue to obey me in the middle of crisis. See, when you get in crisis, your emotions get all haywire. You get the all flipping out. You get the, your eyes get off of Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're walking on some water that you hadn't been on before, 
you get a little nervous and you start to sink. And then you start taking shortcuts. Financial crisis. I'm going there today. Financial crisis, first thing you do, stop tithing. Don't want to give no offering. And all you've done is remove the ability of the one who can move and do a miracle. You're taking them out because you want to operate in disobedience. Relationship crisis. Oh, maybe I, nah, nah, I think I, I think I'll get a divorce. It just ain't working out. She just don't understand. I have needs. Oh, well, let's flip it around. He don't understand. I have needs. <laughs> Help me, Lord. And you get in the middle of a crisis, and your ability to obey is compromised. Amen. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm talking to somebody today. I, I, think you, I, think you, I think you're tracking with me. So faith comes by obeying. Jesus prayed that Peter would obey or do what was right according to the word. No, no, no. That Peter would, would be still able to walk in obedience when everything else around him was getting turned upside down. And our generation, a lot of times we failed at this. Where our parents let us go through the test, we have a tendency to want to take the test for our children. And we made them soft. And they so soft that, that that's why, I'm going to be real, that's why we're seeing suicides on the rates that, now listen, I'm going to be real, I'm going to be real. Listen, everybody talk about an uh, 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 epidemic of bullying. Bullying didn't just get started. I got bullied. Yeah, I got bullied. But you know what? There's a little short lady named Elder May. I came home and I said, Mama, they picking on me. And what you doing? Well, they, they, she said, well, you better stand up and say something. You better not take that. I was like, you know, nowadays the new age parents, they go up to school. I can't believe you. I heard that you said this to my child. And then we want to know why when they get to be adults, they can't work nothing out. Oh, come on now. Y'all like me this morning, right? I got bullied. And I was overweight, so you know they was weighing me out. I was fat this, fat out, but fat that. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm being real. Wear me out, call me fat. I black and fat. Fat this. Yeah, all you do is eat. You know, and at the bottom while I got tarred. Oh yeah, I got tarred. I was in high school, and they ain't calling me fat. But I was getting A's, but they was calling me fat. This girl said, let me, let, let me, let me cheat off your paper. I told her no. She said, you fat. I said, well, I'd rather be fat than stupid. <laughs> The whole classroom laughed and I realized, oh, you got to hit back. We didn't raise the generation of softies. It's time to get tough. Well, I, that wasn't in my notes, but that, that, that's what we call bonus information. So for my young folks, you're you, you, you going to be raising, raise them tough. Rough, tough, and tumble. I mean, I mean, when I was growing up with my, my brother, used to beat me up all the day, all the time. I hear him now, you need to take him to a counselor. <laughs> need to take him to a counselor. Something's wrong with them. I don't know why they want to fight all the time. Because we boys, and boys like to fight. I, I, can go to another, I can go to another topic on that one. All these people want to raise their kids in gender neutral. No. I got a boy, and he going to be a boy, and he, look, I'm going to go old school, and he going to play with G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip. Come on now. 
And my daughter gonna play with Barbie and I ain't buying her no Jeeps and all that other. She gonna be a little diva. Cause I want her to be a diva. Wearing them dresses and putting on makeup. And if my son go near makeup, no, I'm not. Boy, what is wrong with you? You on the wrong side of the room. Get over here. But if we don't define something, All right, let me get back to my message. Man. So now in verse 33, Peter says now, he said, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Peter did. See, see, a crisis really gets you to know you. See, Peter thought he was a bad man. Oh, Jesus, I, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go to prison and to death. I was in, I was in India with the bishop. And, 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 and they, they, the people there were like, you guys ain't going to preach. If you preach, you get up to preach, we're going to put you in jail. So, so all the preachers that got on that plane and flew over, the, we, 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 we did a check. If you don't want to preach, you know, you don't have to be participate and we'll go ahead on and preach. So, you know. So Bishop does the query. Bishop's like, well, I'm preaching. And I look around. I say, I work in a jail, so jail don't. I ain't moved by that. I ain't get on this plane and fly all the way over here not to preach. I came here to preach. The other preacher that was with us, he's like, I came to preach. So we ready to go. Guess who wasn't ready to go? The person who invited us to preach. See, crisis reveals who you really are and what you really believe and how strongly you really believe it. See, in comfort, it's great to say he's my Lord, but when you're in crisis, is he your Lord? It's, oh, come on now. When money going good, it's easy to pay the tithe and give the seed and put out the offering, but when it's tight, See, 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 this is the, this kind of stuff we need to hear, church, because we ought to find ourselves, because, listen, we are compassed about yeah. with, 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 with crisis every day, personal and just the fact that you are a believer. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Peter, Peter, Peter didn't know himself. And listen, past victories... Remember Peter walked on water. Past victories, they don't disqualify you from future tests. See, sometimes you'll spend too much time thinking about the last time you got over. And don't even realize a big old mountain is coming up in your view, right? Right up in front of you. And listen, your biggest problem is you're climbing stuff that God told you to speak to. I'm going to say that again because some of y'all, you're climbing stuff God told you to speak to. All right. Verse 34. I'm trying to work with this, y'all. All right. All right. Then he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster, the little red rooster, shall not crow this day before you will deny three times that you know me. Jesus tell, uh, now I, I think that's kind of direct. Isn't, it, isn't that kind of in your face? You, you selling me all these wolf tickets, but I already know. You telling me all this stuff you're going to do, but I already know. That's just like when our kids tell us stuff they're going to do, and we're like, yeah, right. <laughs> I know you. I just spent a significant amount of time with you. I know that stuff ain't happening. All right, now. Now, I really want to, we talked about crisis, so I want to talk to you about the greatest, your greatest weapon in crisis is prayer. All of this stuff is going on, and when we go, as soon as they finish this dialogue, we go drop down the same chapter to verse 39. So coming out, 
Talking about Jesus. This is Luke 22, 39. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as was, as was a custom, and his disciples also followed him, verse 40. And he went and came to a place, and he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. Now, Jesus knows a crisis is coming. Matter of fact, when you read this, this, this story in, 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 in different uh, of the Gospels, Jesus says that, 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 you're going to, that, that the disciples, you're going to be scattered because the shepherd gets, he knows a crisis is going to come for them. They are not prepared to see him in this position. You've walked three and a half years with Jesus. He's walked on water. He's been in boats and told storms to stop, right? He's raised the dead. He's cleansed the lepers. And he's about to now be taken in bonds and chains and abused and crucified. I don't know about you, but if you walked, let, let me give you an analogy. If you spent every day hanging out with Superman, right? And he could do anything he wanted to do. And then all of a sudden, kryptonite showed up and Superman was just like you. You have put all your trust, all your confidence, and now he's just as weak as you are. This is what they saw. That it was an overthrow of their faith. All right? So coming out, now this is before, before all that happens. They come out and he went to the Mount of Olives, right? And he says, now, pray that you enter not a temptation. Temptation means a trial or proving. A trial of man's fidelity, faithfulness integrity, who he really is, virtue, whether he'll do good things, and consistency. So uh, temptations trust our faithful, test our faithfulness, test our integrity, who we really are, our virtue, and our consistency. A trial, a strong urge or desire to have do something. Temptation is the place where the Holy Spirit voice is silenced and the voice of your soul and your flesh rises up. All right. Luke uh, 23 through, through 41. Jesus, now get this now. This, this, this is so interesting. Jesus is the same place where his disciples are. They're all supposed to be praying. From Luke 22, 41 through 44, Jesus is having a revival meeting. What do you mean? Jesus is praying. He's in so much act. Jesus is meeting with God along with angelic visitation. Jesus was in agony. Blood was pouring from his forehead. Right. And angels come and strengthen him. Jesus is having a meeting with God. And a stone throws away. His disciples are sleeping. Don't tell me. See, this is, you, you, you read scripture. And you realize that's what a lot of times what happens every Sunday morning. There's some people in this room that are absolutely getting set free and delivered and something is parting to them. And there's somebody else in the room, you so, you're sleeping. You're checking the box, I came to church. You're checking the box and then nobody's going to yell at me. You, you've checked your religious obligation. But yet no life was imparted. Jesus in Luke twenty two forty six 46, he says, when he rose up from prayer and had to come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. Verse 46, then he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. So he says, now, before, when they first show up, he says, now, pray that you may not enter into temptation. Then he says to them in 46, pray, rise and pray. That's a command. He says, look, rise and pray. Lest you enter into temptation. The word less means in case. Jesus, therefore, Jesus is saying, rise and pray. No, no, hold up. The word uh, less means in case. We should, now here's, here's a case where we can, let me give you an understanding of that word less. We should close the door lest the dog escapes. Means we should close the door in case the dog escapes. Rise and pray lest you enter into temptation. In case of temptation, you must rise and pray. If you don't pray, the door is open and temptation can walk in. He's saying temptation's coming. Temptation's on the way. And the only way that you can equip yourself to deal with this temptation is to pray. 
Now, I'm not saying that if Peter had prayed, this situation would not have happened. But I am saying if Peter had prayed, maybe his response would have been different. But we can pull out from the story that if we understand that when we pray, we're able to deal with crisis. Listen, Jesus prayed, didn't he? Let me work with this. I believe in crisis, prayer allows you to get a will view of the crisis. Now, everybody says worldview, but when we pray, we get a will, a W-I-L-L. We get a view of his will for us when we pray in crisis. So when we pray in crisis, we get a will view. 